So what are some of the clinical manifestations of UTI and how do our patients present? With cystitis, patients will complain of irritative voiding habits. That means they have burning with urination or dysuria, urgency, frequency to void, suprapubic pain, possible hematuria. When they have pyelonephritis, remember that's UTI that involves the kidney and upper tracts, that patient is going to present with fevers, chills, flank pain. They're gonna have costovertebral ankle tenderness on physical exam. That might be associated with nausea, vomiting, and pain in the lower abdomen. They may not always have irritative voiding symptoms or symptoms of cystitis. There's some atypical presentations and complicated UTI that we should be aware of as well. Prostatitis in men typically presents with symptoms of cystitis, so dysuria, urgency, frequency to void, but oftentimes men will complain of pelvic pain as well. In the elderly, we need to worry about more generalized sign and symptoms of infection. So things like fevers, chills, or altered mental status may be the way an elderly person will present. So based on our patient's clinical presentation that's suspect for UTI, we now are gonna look for physical exam findings that can help us with diagnosis. Costovertebral angle tenderness or abdominal and suprapubic tenderness are going to be common in patients who have urinary tract infection. A digital rectal exam to evaluate for edematous prostate is going to be helpful for prostatitis in men with pelvic or perineal pain. Laboratories are also going to be helpful in the diagnosis of UTI. So looking at our urine analysis or our urine dipstick, the presence of leukocyte esterase indicates white blood cells that are present in the urine. The presence of nitrites then tells us that gram-native bacteria such as the Enterobacteriaceae are present as well. Now be careful because staph and enterococcus do not reduce nitrates to nitrite. So we may be missing that just on a urinary dipstick alone. Urine microscopy is also very important. We can actually see white blood cells called pyuria, which is an, indicates an inflammation or infection. Occasionally, if somebody has pyelonephritis or upper urinary tract infection, then we can see a white blood cell cast. Red blood cells or hematuria may be present with significant inflammation, particularly of the bladder epithelium. And of course, we wanna get that urine culture that will give us the definitive diagnosis with the etiologic agent. So growth of 10 to the fifth or more colony forming units per millimeter of a uropathogen would be positive. So once we've made the diagnosis of UTI in our patients, we wanna start treatment. Now there's a couple of different considerations in treatment. If our patients are healthy, they have a lower urinary tract infection, we can do outpatient treatment. And that's gonna consist of a three to seven day antibiotic regimen. For E. coli and other common gram-negative bacteria, we can use antibiotics like trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, nitrofurantoin, or phosphomycin. We do want to be cognizant of avoiding routine use of broader agents like fluoroquinolones. We certainly don't want to genera generate multidrug resistant organisms. Staph saprophyticus gets the same treatment as above with trimethoprim, nitrofurantoin, or phosphomycin. Enterococcal species, however, require different antibiotics with coverage for enterococcus, and that's gonna include amoxicillin or amoxicillin clavulinic acid. For complicated UTIs or patients who are gonna be inpatient for treatment, we want a 10 to 14 day antibiotic regimen. And at this point, a urine culture with antimicrobial sensitivities is going to be critical in order to successfully treat that underlying urinary tract infection. 